In terms of our overview then, to get back into it, 70 marks, 17.5% of our grade, and then 70 minutes. As discussed, as I said, in our, in our couple of hours spent on King Lear, it is roughly one minute per mark in terms of your paper two material, so 70 marks equals 70 minutes, all right? For some of us, you might need an extra five minutes on this topic, but by and large, 70 minutes is perfect. What you're gonna try and do is, you're gonna try and spend about 60 minutes writing this task, maybe 65 minutes, and then five minutes planning. Hopefully, and you can see it here at the end of the little overview in terms of what you should be doing with regards to your comparative, um, hopefully you won't need a huge amount of time planning because for a lot of these questions it will be simply regurgitation it'll be kind of reminding yourself of essays that you have already answered and that you've already written and then using them on the day itself okay so 70 minutes guys we are going to try and get over six pages even if we are doing say for example the two questions that you will get you will either get a question a and a question b or you'll definitely get these but it depends on um which you guys, uh, so which one you guys select. So question one and question two. So question A and question B will be a 30 and a 40 mark split. Or question two will be a pure 70 mark question. Now, if you find linking your text really, really easy, and I'll talk to you about the blueprint now as we go on. If you find them really, really easy and you can kind of create that conversational flow and start talking about a key moment in your play, for example, and clearly identify what happens in this key moment, very early on in the play is like the middle of the film so to speak and then you have that link that positive link between the two and then that key moment that went in the film etc etc is very different to something that happens towards the beginning of the novel and you find that quite easy well then you guys should probably gravitate towards the 70 mark question if you find that kind of hard and you find it hard to link your text together well then the question a and question b split might be for you side note is there's no prejudice either way. So there's no favoritism either way. If an examiner sits down and sees a 30 and 40 mark answer, they don't immediately think, oh, well, this is kind of a subpar answer, or this is kind of like the person might not have the ability of an individual who takes on a 70 mark. That's simply not the case. When you look at a question A and a question B split, your question A is on one text completely by itself. It's almost like a mini single text question, and that's about three pages. And then your question B then deals with the other two texts, and that tends to be, again, four pages. So that'll be text two and text three, and that'll be about four pages, as I said, bringing up that six and a half, seven pages. And again, same way with here, six and a half, kind of seven pages as well. It seems like a lot. Again, remember though, you do have 10 minutes per page on this. And again, to repeat myself, Ideally, what you're going to be doing is you're actually going to be recollecting an essay that you've already written. You're going to be remembering a lot of the material that you've already kind of constructed yourself um, rather than trying to construct something brand new. I've kind of touched on this a little bit, guys, in terms of two out of the three modes. Again, remind yourself, whatever one of these modes that you don't potentially gravitate towards, be it theme or issue, culture, context, or general vision and viewpoint, it's totally up to you. You just reject one of those modes offhand and then just go with the other two. Again, as I said, you will, be, uh, you will have a choice there no matter what. And guys, prepare. All right, This is really a, an element of your leaving cert where, like, I mean, I, I know we've spoken about King Lear already and we've spoken about, well, there's only four potential questions that they can ask us in King Lear. So therefore, you can prepare heavily for those four types of essay and then you're guaranteed to see kind of, you know, one if not two of them on the day. But your comparative is an area that you can really spend a good chunk of time preparing, really mapping out, filling in the boxes I'll show you. And we'll spend a little bit of time today kind of filling in some boxes with regards to our three individual texts, okay? So prepare, prepare, prepare. It is really one area that you can do a lot of, uh, a lot of prep work on, okay? The comparative is always an interesting one in terms of the grinds uh, in terms of these online summer courses or the online grinds themselves. Uh, students, parents ring in the entire time and ask, well, what, what texts are you covering you know, in the grinds for the comparative? And typically in a grind setup, what we do is we kind of get a general feel for the room in terms of who's looking at what, in terms of what texts are they looking at room or are they looking at um, Never Let Me Go or in terms of plays are they looking at Philadelphia Here I Come, A Doll's House, you watching Brooklyn or Unforgiven, whatever it is. In the grinds with the class, with the, I suppose the class setup in terms of students there, we try and get a feel, we try and get a vibe of, of who's doing what. Obviously here in terms of this being an online medium, um, 
I, I'm just going to talk about them in a general sense. I'm not going to go into any great detail. You obviously have in the notes there, we have, you have a couple of our texts that we're doing in the school here and you have them, hopefully one if not two, maybe even all three of them are applicable for you and in terms of the, the, the text that you're doing in your own day school. Um, but I will speak about the, the modes as opposed to the text and we'll talk about how we link our text under the modes as opposed to, as I said, specific texts. Okay, so guys, that's our overview. That's what we're going to, again, explore today in terms of our comparative. Let's have a little look at our checklist. I'm going to do a checklist now and I'm going to do a checklist then towards the end of this hour as well. Just make sure that we're on top of the things that we should be doing. Linking language, guys, as you go is invaluable within this topic. You have to constantly link your text together. You have to do that bare minimum. You have to do it at the start of a paragraph and you have to do it at the end of a paragraph. Now we'll talk about this in greater detail as we go. I'm going to draw out a little, uh, little, mod uh, a little model of a proper paragraph for you guys. But we have to make sure that at the beginning of the paragraph, we're either starting a new point, so we're presenting a new idea and we're going to show how we're going to link collectively together, or at the, at the end of a paragraph then as well, we're either finishing off that point or you're bringing in, uh, again, the idea of how you're going to link the next text as well, okay? So in terms of topic sentences, in terms of linking language, very important that we start and end our paragraphs with really clear links, really clear uh, propositions in terms of, for the examiner's point of view, am I starting a new point? And therefore, am I kind of mapping that out with a brand new topic sentence? Or am I continuing on a point that I've made? and I'm bringing in a second or third text, okay? So make sure that we're using linking language for the really, really good students. Again, put a brackets here as well. And um, we'll put down the term paragraph as well. And that's quite rudimental. It's kind of rudimental English there, but make sure that within the paragraph as well, you have these little segues, these little throwaway comments. What you'll hear me talk about uh, as we go on here is link forward and link back so that you actually link as in you you present the idea that you're going to cover in the next paragraph you know as we'll see this later on with our second text this is something very similar to our lead protagonist and what he or she does there as well or that you link back as well and you make a statement within the body of the paragraph you say and clearly you know as we've already just looked at in our other text you know this is evident within this text as well all right so linking forward and linking back topic sentences guys are going to be about framing so you frame the paragraph, you frame the point that you are making, okay? You can have multiple paragraphs within a point if you want. You can have one, two, or three. You can have one, two, or three paragraphs dealing with one text if you want as well. It doesn't matter as long as you are answering the language of the question if you're staying on topic. We just make sure that we frame our answer so the examiner knows exactly what it is we're talking about. Optics, your Comparative answer is all about optics. It's all about what it looks like. How good does it look from an examiner's point of view and how easily, I suppose, correctable is it? Um, we're going to talk about coding a lot more now as well as we go. We obviously spoke a lot about coding with regards to our King Lear hours. Um, but in terms of our comparative coding, obviously very, very important. Making sure that we identify what is the, the specific terminology within the question, what is the specific LOQ, and then how do I use that to the best of my ability in terms of, well, to make my answer as fruitful as, and as successful as possible. Your comparative is all about key moments, okay? So it is all about key moments. You should have four to six key moments per text, okay? So you should know four to six key moments per text. Of those four to six, uh, you have to have the beginning and you have to have the end and then you can have whatever you want in the middle, okay? But two out of the four, two out of the six will have to be the beginning. What are you focusing on at the beginning of the text and what are you focusing on at the end of the text, all right? The reason why we say that is it's impossible to chart a theme if you don't know the beginning and you don't know the end, is in where does it begin and then how does that fluctuate and where does it end? And it's impossible then to chart the, the growth and development or lack of development of our central characters, of our protagonist and antagonist, if you don't know what they're like at the start versus what they're like at the end, okay? So make sure that we're all over that in terms of our key moments. And again, this is something that, again, other day school teachers are, I suppose, don't really plug too much, don't really suggest that you are engaging with, but you should be quoting from your text, all right? Now, when you look at, say, for example, a film that we might cover, or you're looking at maybe 
even a play and you ask yourself well it's quite difficult to quote from those texts as opposed to say for a novel which is a lot easier to quote from nonetheless you, you should be quoting you should take some quotes from whatever it is the film maybe potentially a lot of us will be looking at brooklyn take quotes and use them do you need the volume of quotes that you would have say for example uh, in terms of uh, your single text absolutely not but you should be peppering. You should have that little bit of fairy dust in terms of quotes within an answer. It'll stand to your uh, script massively. Imagine yourself as an examiner. Imagine the individual uh, script that you pick up that has quotes from the movie, that has a little bit of stage direction potentially from the play, etc., etc., versus the text that doesn't versus the script that doesn't. Again, of course, the individual with the quotes and that ability to quote is gonna do a lot better, all right? So that is just the beginning of our checklist. These are the things that we need to think about. For a lot of us, because it, for whatever reason in our day schools, in a number of our fifth year classes, now we're on into sixth year, we don't actually cover much of our comparative at all, that it's left for sixth year. And in some ways that's great. Hopefully this video will help you guys out massively then because you'll know exactly what you're looking for before you even start your texts. And again, for those of us who have potentially finished our tree text as well, hopefully you find this information quite useful as well too, because again, you know, you can ask yourself, right, I know all that information. I don't know that, I don't know that. And then you can kind of just tick the boxes, you can fill in the blanks a little bit, all right?